Signs of a slowing economy are growing, but the Fed appears to be staying the course with Chair Jay Powell, striking a hawkish tone last week. In short, suggesting we ain't done yet. If the Fed is intent on hiking us into a high unemployment recession and with markets seemingly on a roller coaster ride to know where how do you play it? Our next guest says a cloudy economic environment might mean good news for high dividend picks. Joining us now, we've got Michael Aroni, who is the State Street Global Advisors Chief Investment Strategist at the U.S. Spider Business. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Michael. Always a pleasure to get some of your time and insights. So, all right, we had teased this before the break, and you're saying that the best thing about 2022 is that it's almost over. So what do we have look, to look forward to in 2023? So I have some good news for you. So it's been well reported that the traditional 60-40 portfolio is on pace to have one of its worst years since 1937 in 85 years. But here's the good news. I looked at the 10 worst years for the 60-40 portfolio, and the following year, in nine out of 10, the 60-40 portfolio had a positive return on average of 17%. The lone exception was 1930 and then again in 1931, following the market crash and the beginning of the Great Depression. I don't know about all of you there, but it doesn't feel like the Great Depression to me. I happen to be doing some holiday shopping in Boston over the weekend and the stores were packed. So I think that this is the most anticipated recession, earnings declines and job losses that I've ever seen. And I actually think the markets may rally once it begins to happen. Michael, one of your peers uh, over at Morgan Stanley, Mike Wilson, now with a note this morning, talking about an earnings recession that rivals 2008, that potentially happening next year in the, in the markets, uh, U.S. stocks may decline 22%. Is that just too bearish? I think it is a bit too bearish. And here's the thing. I don't know. Maybe it's the holidays. I have the holiday cheer or something. Usually <laughs> I'm the Grinch. But here's the thing. Since 1950, there's been 11 times where earnings in the calendar year have fallen by 10% or more. Do you know how many times the markets have fallen in those 11 times? Just twice. The only two times, 2001 and 2008. And so Mike Wilson suggesting perhaps that this is like a 2008. I would disagree. I don't think so. So 2008, we're coming out of some significant structural imbalances as a result of the housing bubble. And you could also argue back in 2001, it was the TMT bubble bursting. I don't think that's the case we're in this time. I think this is a garden variety recession brought on by higher inflation, a tightening Fed, and more cyclical. It will be short and shallow. And as long as it is, I think markets will look through to the other side and begin to price in a recovery. Um, the other thing, though, that those two eras had in common, if I'm not mistaken, is something else that you just mentioned. That's the tightening cycle, right? So isn't that something that also typically causes stocks to fall? I guess you just don't think that they'll keep going. So I think what, I think that's right. I think one of the risks is, in fact, if the Fed does break something or goes too far. And I think part of the volatility that we continue to see is that the market keeps having to readjust to where the Fed is headed. But I'm actually optimistic that the Fed will begin to end its tightening cycle in the first quarter. So I think they'll raise rates again in February, possibly on March 22nd, and then I think they'll be done. And when they're done, I think markets will breathe a big sigh of relief. Analysts are still looking in aggregate for an expected 5.5% growth rate in earnings. Do you think that's too high? It is too high. It's going to come down. Uh, as I said, I think on average, the, during a recession and a bear market, those earnings kind of typically come down about 14% or so. I would expect that to be the case here. But here again, I would underscore this idea that, you know, since 1950, 11 times this has happened. Only twice has the market declined. Everybody, investors are expecting the earnings to fall. We're expecting a recession. We're expecting a tick up in unemployment. I believe when it does in fact happen, markets will begin to expect that monetary policy will get easier. Don't forget in 2024, we're going to be headed towards a national election. So all of a sudden Democrats and Republicans will find some common ground in order to ensure that we're not in a recession when voters go to the polls during that time. I know it seems like a long way off, but I guarantee you that there'll be policy to help the economy if it is slowing before that national election. And then finally, I think investors will begin to price in a recovery 
as a result of those actions. And they'll do it far sooner than when the economic data, earnings data, and job losses kind of bottom it. So given all that, Michael, is it too early to say go cyclical when it comes to stock investments? So one of our big themes for next year is to play offense and defense with dividend payers, Julie. And I think that's key here. So I recognize the limitations to my forecasting ability. So should I be wrong, I do expect that in a year like this, when volatility is high and markets are down, dividend payers and growers are outperforming the market pretty considerably. Now, the good news is, is that if the market were to rebound, as I expect, typically dividend payers and growers have greater upside market capture compared to just low volatility and defensive names. They tend to have more cyclical exposure, things like financials and industrials, uh, for example, and they tend to have more value exposure. When I say more than, I mean more than defensive parts of the market, like utilities and staples and low volatility stocks. So to us, you get to play offense and defense with dividend payers and dividend growers. And I think that seems like a comfortable spot as we head into the uncertainty of 2023. All right, we'll leave it there. Michael Roney over at State Street Global Advisors. Always good to see you, uh, my friend. Have a, a happy holiday season. We'll talk to you soon.